We're happy, 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 so very happy. Drop my phone on the floor, but I'm happy. It only cost a thousand dollars. I'm happy. I'm trying to be happy. Hey, look, mom's here. Hey, mom. <laughs> All right, hi everybody. Guess who? Welcome to the show. We're flipping on you here. Flip, flip it, flipping good. We had um, some really awesome uh, to the show. We're flipping on you here. Flip. technical opportunities. Call that an echo effect. This is high production, friends. High production in the <laughs> Truscott household. Welcome. Lovely to have you with us. We've got um, we got something juicy coming your way today. So say hello. Let us know where you're piping in from. And what beverage might you be imbibing? I huh? am in need of a beverage. I'm ready for a beverage. I you had... didn't happen to bring any beverages, did you? I did. You guys got any beverages? Can I have a beverage? <laughs> Do you guys know about, it's like so the rage in... The rage, uh, oh, yes. In uh, Texas. Mexican it's, uh, water. Mexican sparkling water. <laughs> it's kind of sharper, has a sharper... Um, it's almost like we carbonation than Perrier and Pellegrino is quite refreshing. We always seem to do commercials. We've done St. Pauli Girl. We've done Rodney Strong. We've done Topo Chico. Could you share this video on your page and maybe <laughs> hashtag the brands and maybe we could get a sponsor? Maybe we could get some kickbacks. <laughs> I'm open. I'm open. We are open. If you're looking for someone to support your brand, if it's in alignment with who I am, you give me a call. You give us a call right here, right now. All right. Well, here they come. Lovely to be with you. It's Thursday night. Hi, Tasia. It's the last Thursday of May. Wow. What does that mean? Is there something significant about that? Well, it just means it's almost June already. What? Like, I feel like I just blink. Right? It was Christmas. We were doing the holiday oh, hangouts. Don't even go there with the Christmas stuff. And then Come we on. just like blink, blink. And it's like, oh my gosh. It's blink, almost blink. halfway through the year. It's almost like July is the halfway point. Wow. That's how I feel about my life. But who knows? Might be here for a whole lot longer. <laughs> Hi, Joanna. <laughs> Hi, Kim. Welcome, sweet friends. Thanks for joining us on your Thursday. So it's date night. All of us having a little date together. Mm -hmm. And we've got some shares that are going to come through. Sabrina, will you set this up for us? What's going on today? Because we've had some very deep conversations yeah. about stories. You know, when we have something that we want to share and we're, and we're talking to each other about it, like, oh, this would make such a good topic for the Trisbrina show. And it's something that is really... Um, in our lives right now, things we're talking about and thinking about is usually what we want to talk to you about. And when we try to encapsulate it in a sentence so we can send you an email, <laughs> it's like, oh, this is a really tough one because yeah. it, it's, it's a lot of layers. So I think we came up and we called it the stories we tell ourselves. Right they. Do they empower you? <laughs> Do they disempower you? But it's not what usually when I'll say the stories I tell myself, when I say that I usually think about what happened to me as a child that oh, I am now ancient story. thinking about when I react to something. This, this is a little bit different. I'm going to call this the Swiss cheese story effect. Swiss cheese, huh? Yeah, yeah. I hope you're going to explain yeah, that one. It's the Jarlsberg. Yarls, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going we're gonna to jump right in and you're totally invited into this conversation. So the chat is live. We are with you now. I see we've got Gail here. Hi, Gail. Oh, do you guys, did you see my nautical necklace? Here, I will close up so you can see. Be careful, you might get a jellyfish bite. Thank you for the heart <laughs> bomb shower that's coming through. Good to see you, Christina. Hi, Martin. Very cool. So again, this is an open dialogue. We love to engage with what's going on in this conversation for you. So. Digging into stories, the stories that we tell ourselves, and filling in the Swiss cheese. <laughs> Do you want to jump in? Do you have? I, I, I'd love you to. got to. Okay. So here we go. What sort of started this is, I, for months now, I've been noticing, not just in myself but in other people, having conversations where I'm going to turn this music way down. All right. Where. There's this amazing thing the brain does, right? It's really genius that it does it, but it's really smart 
if as the driver of the brain, right, like I want to be the brains of the brain, knows that it does this. And what it is, the reason I called it like the Swiss cheese effect, is because a lot of times there's a situation and we know bits and pieces about it. Okay. Right? But but we don't know a lot about it, and that's what makes the holes. That's why it's Swiss cheese. Ah, there's missing, I see where you're going with Missing this. variables. But when someone tells a story or tells you about something, or when I t say something, I don't say, well, I know this, and I don't know that, and I know this. I come to conclusions. I feel I fill those holes in. I just assume. I imagine, right? Well, Most I likely, based on things I've seen before, right? And that's where it does come from, your past. Right? We were laughing today because um, years ago, years ago, probably... 20 years ago, late one night uh, before we were married, I, I heard this noise in the house I was living in. And you know, it was like... Oh yeah, it was scary. I got a call. Like, I thought, oh, somebody's trying to get in the house. What are they trying to claw their way into the house? But Larry told me, my brother, that there was a like a cat burglar monster that can come at night and cat get you. Cat burglar monster. Yeah. And then I had had situations where with... Um, scary situations with men in my early 20s where I felt like they were coming to get me. So I was sure somebody was coming to get me. And I called Tristan. Yep. And I actually stood in the pantry. I got in the pantry with the door shut because I was so sure someone was coming in the house. He comes over and it's a tree. It's a tree branch that's blowing and <laughs> scraping the yep. roof. Yep. That's what it was, right? So Scraping the roof. I, I knew there was a noise, and I came to all these conclusions, right? The cat burglar's outside. I better hide in the closet. The I cat even, burglar monster. I even got a knife. Like, I'm going <laughs> to use it, right? I got a knife out of the knife. The, you were the, ready. The block. You were in ready. the pantry. Like, I was the one to be scared of, not the cat burglar. <laughs> yeah, you didn't want to walk <laughs> into this situation. <laughs> but what really made me think about it was this photo shoot that we did. Do you want me to tell him about that? I think it's hilarious. Okay. <laughs> Personally, so, yes. So recently we did a few photo shoots for our website. And particularly this last one that we did, the, the photographer was in town and he was leaving to go back home to Hawaii, but he had filmed like a bunch of kind of real estate agents or he had been filming at a business and that business had paid for him to rent a light that was super cool that he could use outside that would help... Um, balance sunlight, right? So he could actually shoot into the sunlight. She said, oh, I can, I can finish taking those pictures of you. So we, we met um, at a little park by our house. Now, what's really funny is that people have seen these pictures and I've gotten such incredible feedback about them. Perhaps you've seen some of them. On, they're really cool. On our Facebook page or, or on Instagram. And they're me in the director's chair, me filming Tristan and um, there's a, oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. You're so photogenic. Who did your hair and makeup? Wow, I wish I had a photo shoot like that. That's so glamorous. You know, maybe someday I'll have a photographer and a hair and makeup. And you know, they're, they're imagining. Hey, they're filling in the Swiss cheese. They here. are so filling in that Swiss cheese because that cheese had a lot of holes. <laughs> Here's how it really went down. <laughs> It's so awesome. The things that you don't see behind the scenes. It's 90 degrees in Austin, Texas. It was a hot evening. And it had been raining a lot the few days before. So we go to the park down the street. And we're, we're in my, my Kia SUV. And we have, we have a few changes of outfits. We have a director's chair, a megaphone, because you, know, you, you might need props. You never know when you need a megaphone. At, at, the, at the Turtle Dojo. Be ready. So we get there. Man, it, well, first of all, I do my own hair and makeup, which I think is awesome. Um, I do too. And I can teach you to do it too. <laughs> You're really so good at it. I do my own hair and makeup, and, and if, if he's having the photo shoots, I, there's things that I do to his skin and ways that I powder it that, she me. that really make his face Have you seen my um, hair photograph in a way that looks really awesome. <laughs> so we get there and we get out, step out of the car, and it feels like Vegas hot, like like like... The hot demon is just going, ah, right? And you have to like move the thickness as you walk across. It was and, huge. And then it was the huge. photographer says, 
Oh, look, there's water. Let's film by the water, which did film so beautifully. It's beautiful. But it was full of mosquitoes. Well, yeah, they... Everywhere. Giant mosquitoes. <laughs> like Texas mosquitoes. I think they had, like, long needle noses where they just go in and draw blood. <laughs> they were big so Texas mosquitoes. We, we, you know, are tromping through, through the grass, trying to find a flat spot to start taking some pictures Carrying a director's chair, carrying a megaphone, carrying whatever setting up was the needed. set, and we find like one location and we shoot, and it's it's pretty hot, right? And so then he has time when we can change clothes. And can I share just my oh, yeah. perspective of how this is happening? Uh, you're, you're, no, no, you're you'll perspir- take it. Yeah. my per- perspiration perspective. You're, you're, so we just got some great shots of Sabrina doing the director's chair thing because, as you know, you know she's beautiful and all that, but she's so good with the camera and lighting and you know, helping to look great and feel great and present yourself well on, on film. Thank you so much for that. You've helped me so much. And so she was taking some cool shots for that. And then it was time to change attire. And so I was not a, like a car tire, but like the clothing attire. Ha ha ha. I'll be here all week. So <laughs> you never know. You know, you got to be clear. Words mean things. So it was my turn to do some qigong type flowing stuff, and she was getting changed. And you're and on I, your long sleeves, right? I'm sweating like crazy, and I'm like, I've got like rolls of um, paper towels that I brought with me, because I knew what to expect, and I'm like blotting my face, trying and to the, like keep the, the sweat. on the paper towels are sweat and mosquitoes. So if you see my pictures and I look like all glowing, now you know I was, de- <laughs> you know, dabbing my face dry. But I glance over to the Kia SUV suburban outfit, right, and... All I'm going to say is the chair is laid all the way back, the door's open, and there's this lady in there. I don't know what she's doing, but it looks like Spanx are having a wrestling match with her. What was going on? Well, I walked all the way back to the car, which which was much further than, than would no, be this would be, be a good distance. No, you were close. You had pulled the car up. Yeah, and got in and turned the AC on. Just, whoo, turned the AC on, because I had a long dress on in the first shoot. And I pulled the car up and just pulled it on the side of the road. Now, we're actually at the park that's the community center of our neighborhood. So it's where people, it's like the hike and bike trail. And then there's people coming by. And I'm like, I need to change clothes. And fortunately, I'm super flexible and I'm not that big, right? So, so I, I start the car, turn on the air conditioning, jump over the, the emergency brake into the passenger seat, lay it all the way down, and I take my dress off. And I get my spanks off, and now, ladies, I'm hot, and I have to get jeans on. I have to get jeans on in the car, skinny jeans, laying down, sweaty, and then like, don't sweat, don't sweat. I see because this the crazy only, lady over The only there. mirror we have is the one in the car, the little car mirror. <laughs> She's like doing this, working the spanks, and getting the new. And trying to stay down so the people on the there's hike can people, show. there's kids around, people. <laughs> Right? This is like, you don't do this. They're asking, like, because a lot of you who actually train with us in our Life Force classes, you know we film here sometimes. It's called the Ninja Turtle Dojo. They're like, how do you do costume changes at Ninja Turtle Dojo? This is how you do it. (laughs) This is how you do it. Lay it down. (laughs) With the AC boss. You know, then we went and did shoot in the the jeans. If you've seen those, it's where I'm, I'm behind the camera filming Tristan. Yeah. And the shots, are, they're so they awesome. They really came out great. They're really, really beautiful. Thank you to our photographer. And then there was a third costume change where we did Qigong together where I'm in long pants. And I tell you, it was hot. I was so glad to get to wear those long pants because I would rather be hot than have all those mosquitoes. Well, if Sabrina gets bitten by a mosquito, it's like somebody being punched. <laughs> it goes, it swells up. Yeah. It's just these big naughty things on naughty naughty knots Nuts. on her they're like bumps like big bumps so yeah that's funny right like that's all the stuff going on behind the scenes and yet you end up with this result which is like these really beautiful pictures yeah but nobody and knows the beautiful. backstory but I, I i wasn't freaking out because it just reminded me i feel like i was like a kid on the little rascals growing up I was always doing little plays, putting on little plays. I was in theater. I was in dance. I have changed clothes behind many bushes. Um, You know, I'm just used to it. In theater, you're you're just always, you know, even even with the charity event for ten years. Sure, you gotta run backstage. I was like, hey, can somebody come and like hold up a sheet because I've got to change from a dance costume to an evening gown and I don't have time to go anywhere except this corner. So. I, I, I'm okay 
okay with it. But what's funny is hearing everybody um, filling in my Swiss cheese from looking at the picture. You know, they just imagine, what do I have, like a, a trailer with a hair and makeup artist? Somebody's spritzing me down with water and rubbing ice on my neck the whole so time. So this is called know. working the hustle and doing your own <laughs> PR and publicity. Sometimes you gotta break out the Kia and get the Spanx and do the thing and create the beautiful result that you want. Yeah. But the beautiful lesson in this funny story is the backstory behind the scenes mm -hmm. and how we do that in life is we time. fill in your Swiss cheese analogy we fill in the gaps because that's what the brain has to do mm -hmm. it needs to know what's going on so that it feels safe and why it fills in the gaps right because some someone might fill in the gaps to say someday maybe I'll have a big team and I can have a photo shoot like that for my business so they filled in the gap in a way that disempowered them someone else may say well, that's so cool she's not on a set she's just standing out in the grassy field next to a stagnant puddle of water I can do that right so it's up to you <laughs> to make up the story that either yeah. empowers you or disempowers that's you so true. that most of the time we only have a little bit of facts like I told Tristan earlier I saw a girl at Whole Foods and she was in front of me, and the way that she was dressed, just, um, it was really like... Uh, she seemed very relaxed. Pajama bottoms, long shirt, nothing matched, um, lots of, you know, hair that doesn't, that, that when they don't brush it, and it's just kind of in dreadlocks, and um, she was just carrying this little, like, crocheted purse that looked old, and I, I almost offered to pay for her groceries because of I made up a story I found out this is a very very wealthy woman that's just her style I made up this whole thing like wow she's coming to Whole Foods she probably doesn't even know how expensive it is here I made up this whole story based on the way this this woman looked right I, I filled in the whole she was just like a little bit of cheese I filled in a big piece and then how often do we do that make up stories where we're not included Right? So that's true. another one. Oh, look at that. That's happening and I'm not included. They don't like me. They didn't return my call. They have, don't... You, have you noticed how we all do this? Have you noticed in your own life how you'll fill in the Swiss cheese and how important it is sometimes to stay neutral? And that's the hardest part, I think, for me at least because we're trained to fill in the gaps, right? It's like if we don't know, can you be, are you okay with not knowing? Like, uh, or fill it in in a way that empowers you and the person. Well, that's, that's the most amazing that's the beautiful. thing you can you can think. Like, I think it's great that people find a positive way. Like, oh, I bet just always assume the best, but it doesn't. It's not what the little brain likes to do. Well, those are strategies that we all want to develop, right? Like, what story do you want to be telling? I can relate to a, a story that happened in my life not long ago, and. The story could have gone, well, it went two directions. So I'll just fill you in on my story and see how it relates to you. I was at the gym and there's this guy that I've known for, gosh, at least 10, maybe 15 years, a friend, yeah, sweet, though. sweet man, great guy. And um, we always say hi in the gym and we have some really cool conversations around energy and the law of attraction and, you know, doing good in the world, just pretty cool dude and I, I like talking with him and he takes care of his body he works out often and so we have a lot of things in common in that mm -hmm. way and um, one day I saw him he was stretching on the yoga mat and I walked over to say hi you know like you do and he ignored me yeah. I was I was friends with him too and, and so this week she wasn't there but then in the future he started ignoring Sabrina as well and, you know, we're all sensitive, right? We feel stuff, and it hurts your feelings. And he wanted to date me years ago. He used to be quite I, chatty. Whatever. You know. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yes. And why wouldn't he? <laughs> why wouldn't he? So, that, that has nothing to do with the story, but the reality is, I'm now wondering, WTF, man, what's up? And... I tried to break the ice. Have you ever had that happen where you're like trying to connect with somebody, but they're just sort of shrugging you off and I, I can take a, you know, a closed door. I got it. Okay, fine. And I'm like, hey, whatever, dude. And I said goodbye. And 
I just, you know, had the question in my mind. Like, we talked about it quite a bit. Well, I came Wonder home. I did. said, Sabrina, what, what do you think it is? You know, did, did he hear something about me that he doesn't like? You know, did I do something to the guy? I don't know. Did I say something on social media? And weren't we good enough friends that he would just come and ask me about it's it like, if he heard something? Yeah, exactly. So now when you have a quizzical situation, almost an enigma and you don't want to press it with the person, you have to start filling it in. At least my brain does. So it started running tapes and laying down a story. Well, he blah, blah, blah this and blah, blah, blah that. And then it kind of shut my energy down. Every time I'd see him at the gym, I was like, I could hear a song in, in my mind. Um, oh, what was it? It's that guy, Philip Phillips. Now, we're, now you're just somebody I used to know. <laughs> Just somebody I used to know. You know that song? And I'd play that song and I'd, and I'd walk. And I just stopped even looking his direction. And eventually I got to the point where in my mind, I don't know, don't cross me. You're dead to me. No, I'm kidding. But my brain was doing this silly thing. And I was just like, because I was hurt. Yeah. That's the defense mechanism. And it feels belittling. Like, who does he think he is ignoring me? I'll ignore him too. Well, yeah, you know, that's part of the ego. This is a, such an interesting and lesson. And then I was like, if he's, if he's not nice to Tristan, I'm not even going to look at him. <laughs> Don't hurt my friends. The ego does this ego meaning self, self-centered, self wonky part of the self. It says, you hurt me, I'm going to hurt you back. Have you ever seen that in your own persona? You hurt me. I'm going to get you back. So my getting back was just to ignore him. Well, how long do you want to do that? And how long do you want to tell that story? So I wised up eventually. I'm like, you know what? This isn't a vibration of me. Yeah. Maybe he's going through something. Did you ever think about that? What about sending him love? Unconditional love. Yeah. You know, you have this mission statement, Tristan. He couldn't be going through something for a year. It was right? a long time. Yeah. My, my personal mission statement in my life is... The purpose of my life is to fully awaken to the vibration of unconditional love. I, I got to live it, right? I'm not living that. So I start sending love. And it wasn't long ago that he was in the exact same spot on the yoga mat. And I had my little phone open and I was watching the beginning of one of our live classes where we were dressed up like... I don't know. Our, um, our wacky workout classes uh, that we do in our dojo. I was like a Rastafarian and you look like some kind of caveman. Yeah, yeah. And we were like, hur, 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 hur. <laughs> and I just took the video and I stuck it in front of his face. <laughs> As you know, he knows Sabrina. And I'm just like, this is what we do before we work out. And I broke it. It broke. The thing broke and he started laughing. <laughs> he started laughing, looks at me, and I felt like he remembered his friend. And he said, you know what? I've been wanting to tell you this. I'm really sorry for the way I've been acting. I just want you to know that I've been going through some stuff and I've been having some therapy and um, it had nothing to do with you. It was all me. And I was like, there it is. There's the universe just putting it right there for me. It has nothing to do with us. It's a story. Yeah. We're filling in the Swiss cheese, man. <laughs> How about we just yeah. skip all that and send love? Mm -hmm. That's my takeaway. Yeah. And That's I want to awesome. be in that vibration. And you think, which one's going to help him more? Me ignoring him and putting out energy like, you're dead to me. Or, <laughs> I, I love, you. I kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I love you no matter what. And I hope that you're okay. Right? Yeah. Isn't that, like, that's such a yeah. lesson for me in, in mm -hmm. this, this year. That was my, you know. Yeah. I saw this video on uh, Facebook today, <clears throat> and it, it was this story about this man was at the airport, and he went into the deli, and he bought this, uh, he was gonna, it was going to be a long flight, and he bought this plastic container with like four giant chocolate cookies and a magazine, and he took it back and, um, and set it down on the table as so reading his magazines, and um, the guy sitting across from him reached and got one he was he started eating one of his cookies and the guy sitting across r reached and got one of the giant cookies and ate it and he was like <laughs> like what <laughs> really yeah and so he went and got it because there were four he got another one and started eating it and then there was only one left and the guy across the table gets the last cookie breaks it in half, and gives him half. And he's just like, 
Well, I, what just happened? <laughs> right? Like, who does he think he is? How strange. And the guy, the cookie stealer, <laughs> cookie stealer. Get, gets up to go get his flight. And, and the man that had bought the magazines and the cookie, he needed to go to his gate. And he picked up the magazines and his whole container of four oh, cookies was under his magazine. That's so good. He had been eating the other guy's that's cookies. That's so good, and man. And the other guy gave him half of his last cookie. Gosh, those are the most incredible moments where you just really have to reflect. I judge. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a judger. I got to really open my bandwidth up here and stop this. Mm -hmm. We don't know. There's, there's stories upon stories going on. How about we just drop it? And there's so much magic wow. happening. There's That's so much great. coincidence. There's so many things happening simultaneously so that things line up exact, exactly as each of us need them. So I, if, you, if I really remember that, then when I see someone do something that, see, that I'm like, well, that didn't seem very nice or why did they leave my class early and oh why did they leave early too are they going to do something together oh that person didn't call me back I must not have a big enough list to get their attention right it's just you know that that doesn't empower me and it doesn't put out an incredible message to the universe that's going to respond back to that so when I'm I'm either gonna be the this is what I know and this is what I don't know but man, it's sneaky. We, you're going to fill that stuff in because it provokes a you feeling. fill it in, yeah. So just make sure that when you're filling in the Swiss cheese that what you <laughs> fill it in with makes you feel good. Even if it doesn't end up being the truth. True At least that. you felt really good and empowered you. Choose your mood. And it sent out a message of love. It sent out a message of kindness. Assume that what the other people are doing is kind and generous. And you win. You, you That's always so win. good, Sabrina. I, I have a saying I use sometimes. We pull out of people what we project onto them. So why not just project all kinds of goodness? Yeah. Even if they're doing something wonky, project love and help them. <laughs> right? <laughs> like you can't control other people and you can't control their vibration, but you can control yours. Yep. You can certainly yeah. shift state and shift our own. Yeah. I, um, I just want to do a shout out because I've been liking and loving and connecting with you all through through the laptop. I just want you to see that I have a laptop. He's there. so proud of his laptop. Cover. I know. Look at the cover. You know, we, we really are. We're all storytellers. But the stories that we tell, the way we fill in our cheese, that's a reflection on us. Never about the situation we're telling the story. The story you tell, that's just a, that's my story that I'm putting on that situation. Totally. Um, so I'm feeling your vibes here and I'm loving all the comments and all the shares. And Christina, Kim, thank you for uh, tickling us here. And the laughter. Hi, Ron, I'm glad you made it. Martin, thank you for your contribution. Joanna, you're always so awesome. I'm right, I love how you write down the big takeaways yeah. always. And, uh, so many of you I guys are doing the Happy Healthy Back program with us. That's going to be amazing. Tasha said um, that she's going to get you a trailer. We're all going to get you a trailer for Christmas. <laughs> with air conditioning. <laughs> and Christina's like, yeah, she would have never guessed, you know, because we look so amazing that we, all that stuff was going on in the background. And, <laughs> in the um, back seat. <laughs> hi, Jenna. Awesome to see you here. Hi, Tony. She called, Tony calls that leaking energy when mm. we were talking about the guy at the gym. Yeah. And Narissa, what are you doing up so late? Narissa's in England right now. and She's catching this live. Awesome. Hi, Wendy. Good to see you. Hi, Carol. Anyway, thank you all for the love and the heart showers and just being part of this with us and taking the time to play. We really appreciate it. And as we've been doing uh, the past few Trisprina shows, it's date night. And I'm going to take my lovely bride out tonight. And we're going to this place called Perry's. That's the plan. And Perry's has a piano bar. And they have some really beautiful yeah. music. So what we try to do is get a Gosh. selfie. Maybe we should get it. Maybe we could record a video. The man that plays the piano there, um, one of my local students ha has, was raised in Austin. She said he's been playing piano oh. in downtown Austin for 25 years. At this place? Well, it wasn't. Remember, it was a bank. This is right. a this is a bank that has been turned into a yeah. restaurant. It's, it's a pretty super cool place. Cool. Yeah, the the he vault was... you can rent out the vault and it's like a private room to have like wine tastings and stuff. 
There's some really cool places here. You definitely have to come to Austin. Oh, I have to tell you, I went to the Country Club today. Those of you who've been to Austin before and you've been part of our events, and the Country Club is back open. They've remodeled and it's amazing. And we're in conversations with having that same awesome room that we had last two times. Well, no, two times before. Anyway, I'm hoping, I'm praying, put out good vibes that we're going to get the Country Club this year, October, November. Cool? Mm -hmm. okay. I, just, I just have one more um, thing to share. With the filling in the stories, the place that I see it um, very, very frequently with people is with the, when our bodies don't feel good, right? And the stories we start telling ourselves, right? Like maybe you have a scratchy throat, it's like, oh, is it strep throat? Am I contagious? And which it, those thoughts are okay, but I see that like for me, I, I can jump to the horrible conclusions, especially if you Google it, right? <laughs> and so like, even especially when dealing with your body, which we're really going to get into this um, when we dive deeper into the mind body magic with the back program, the thoughts and what you think and the stories you tell yourself are so important. And in this, in the back program, we're going to be really looking at what, what have you been filling those your holes with regarding your healing and your back health that we need to fill with something different. That's right. And Martin just said, we probably need to get a table for 25 now that everybody knows where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> if you live in Austin, the time is, and the place is. And uh, Ron, you were asking about when y'all can come and visit. Well, now you know we're shooting for October, November. They're going to get back to us with dates, and then we'll move that forward, and we'll let you guys know. So thank you for being part of this beautiful community. We really... We really connect with you guys. There's such beauty here. There's all this love is always being poured in. You're so beautiful. And we so appreciate the loving shares that yeah. you share with us. I mean, come on, mirror, mirror, you know, mirror, mirror. You're beautiful. And thank you for being part of this. Okay, yeah. who's going to push the button? Yo. We got to say goodbye. Okay. Bye. We'll see you next week. <laughs> yes, you will. <laughs>